Hey everyone, today I am at uh, the garage Ford by my car in Geneva in Switzerland to show you this uh, small SUV, the Ford Kuga plug-in hybrid with the trim um, ST Line X of 2020. So this car has a DCVT transmission and is a front wheel drive. Uh, sorry if I talk weird today or weirder than usual, but it's very very cold. It's minus two or three here So sorry about that. So first let's talk about some numbers as usual. So we are going to have the fuel engine of 152 horsepower four cylinders 2.5 liters turbo with 200 newton meters of torque and we have the electric engine of 131 horsepower 230 newton meters of torque and it has a battery capacity of 14.4 uh, kilowatt hour with a 56 kilometer range in a wltp mixed cycle which is quite good in terms of charging it can be charged on a 2.3 kilowatt home socket in uh, six hours or in a wall box or public charging station in three, in three hour and a half um, with a type 2 socket in the front of on the left so the the, the maximum power to charge the car is uh, 3.7 kilowatt which is less than some uh, other cars in terms in terms of combined power we are going to have a 225 horsepower with 200 newton meters of torque and a 0 to 100 to um, on uh, with uh, 9.2 seconds so of course this car is also you know uh, quite heavy it's 1840 kilos which is 280 kilos more than the fuel engine in terms of fuel capacity we have a 45 liter liters uh, reservoir uh, um, and the uh, fuel and the, the the normal car so the no not the plug-in hybrid is 54 so it is less than the normal fuel car but this is normal in those kind of you know uh, motor, uh, you know engines in plug-in hybrids so in terms of the design i do find the car very nice it is elegant and it has you know some you know sportiness touches especially with those uh, bicolor uh, wheels uh, which is you know in a sh with a uh, shiny black and those are 19 inches wheels so this is quite good in terms you know of sportivity as usual the bigger the better and we have also this very nice uh, grill which is not shiny and this one uh, below that is shiny and we have also led lights in the front and in the back which are also uh, very nice and we will also have the exhaust pipes in chrome and both on the right and the left which is a very nice touch and we will find this black shiny piece in the front as you have seen before too so now let's see for the trunk space so first for the trunk we have we can open it with the foot with of course the button and also with the uh, how do you call this with the key with the key of the cars so let's open it this electric boot and we have uh, normally we should have around uh, if i remember well around uh, 575 liter of space and we can have more if we slide the uh, if we slide the the rear seats so they can be you know they can you can change the position and also you can slide them which is very nice and you can have 1481 liter of space if you put everything down now beneath here you are going to have the, the 12 volt battery because the 14.4 kilowatt hour battery is going to be uh, beneath beneath here so now first before we talk about everything else let's show you the entire space that you can have with the car the the trunk space you can have maximum 
is going to be all of that. So you're not in a completely flat configuration, but still it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a very nice space that you can have. So they are very generous about that, which is just great. Now, if we put everything back together, up like that, and quite heavy, this one, up like. So you can also change the position with this. So I'm just going to show you the difference. This is the difference you can have with the position of the rear seats, which will be very good for space and comfort. And now also to show you that you can slide, you have some handles. I'm going to try to do that for you. Just to show you the difference. I'm not even sure I'm completely in the front. But this is the difference that you can have, which is just great in terms of uh, space they offer you. Now let's put back everything together. Now, in terms of materials, we're going to have some hard plastic here. Here's some uh, synthetic leather right here, which is also soft, which is very good, and some hard plastic. In terms of seats, you're going to have here some tissue and also some um, synthetic leather. The seats are very nice and you have also, you know, the, the red stitches, which gives it, you know, um, a little bit of sportiness. And I do like the design, but let's see how comfortable those seats are. So what I do like, what, you, what I do like in this car so much is that you have so much space in here. That's just incredible. I've never seen that for a long time. And the, the, the front seat is configured, you know, for my height, 182 centimeters. And you have way, way, you know, a lot of space, which is just great. Here we don't have, we don't have a big tunnel which means that you have also a lot of space if you have a fifth person. But this right here is a bit more, you know, more uh, hard. It's harder, it's stiffer than the other seats. But otherwise, you still have some space. You have also the seat warmers for the back and a 230 volt socket, which is great if you would like to put, I don't know, like a computer to charge or something like that. And you can also control the airflow, not the temperature, but the power of the airflow and here you can also have you know some space to put some stuff so it's not really uh, you know you're not it's not you know it's a it's deep but it's not really you know wide wide no I, that's not a good term i forgot and let's see now in the front what you have in terms of material so in the front it's a little bit uh, different so here we have some kind of a soft plastic here we have also something that is soft, which is also very nice. And you have this nice plastic piece, which adds, you know, some, uh, some elegance to the car. And we have also this uh, plastic, I think this is plastic, but it has, you know, some kind of aluminum, uh, you know, feel or look, which is also nice. So this will not get uh, scratched that easily compared to the usual a black shiny plastic that you can find in some cars so this is uh, well this is a good point and here is some space to put your things and here you can have also those nice seats which which are of course in the same materials than in the back and you have here to uh, the electric settings on this side uh, you can arrange your car with you know uh, electric wise and here for the lumbar support which is just great now let's see what do we have in the inside so we have of course the uh we have all the buttons right here to control all the things here in the uh, outside you have also to control the windows to lock the car and here to open the boot for the uh, gasoline for the fog lights front and back to also adjust your lights if you would like to have them in automatic or not and to change the int the light intensity of the instrument instrument clusters here we have uh, some leather and uh, it's quite comfortable, you know, to, to, to have it in hand. It's very nice. You have to control also uh, some of the lights and the vipers right here. Oh, and you have the, the lane assist, uh, which is right here that we're going to see after on the menu. 
Here you can control the, I don't remember how it's called in English, so I'm just going to start the car, so it's going to be uh, to be shown. So now, just let me see. So if we press, so the lane centering assist, that will work with the cruise control. Here you can set the distance that you would like to have in the front of the car, to um, have the speed limiter, the dynamic cruise control, to change uh, the speed of it, of the limiting and the um, adaptive cruise control, and also to have, you know, the sound of the car, you can, uh, the sound of the uh, radio that you can control here. And here you have to adjust, and I'm going to show you just after the head up display, uh, the different menus that you can have in front of you, and of course, the, uh, the voice control system, and also to, you know, to hang up and to uh, answer and switch music. So this is what you have in the buttons right here. Just in front of us, we're going to have a 12.3 inches screen, which is also quite nice. And we're going to have some buttons right here to control. So for example, just to show you, so here you can control what they are called screens. I'm just going to show you what are, what you can see in those screens. Calm screen, fuel economy, trip computer, uh, traffic signs, EV coach, electric, electric efficiency, eco behavior, tire pressure, etc. seat belts, every speed. You can have so much more. Um, you have to deselect some to add more. And all that you see here is something that you will, that you have here. So those are the menus that I have configured in the car. So the trip computer, the EV coach, traffic signs, electric efficiency, eco behavior, uh, tire pressure monitoring system, and fuel economy and i think i'm just you know going to a circle right here and what do we have again if i press we have the audio menu navigation phone uh, settings in the settings you have local hazard information brake coach oil life tire pressure etc etc and for the display settings we have some other you know small uh, menu eco code driving history etc just to show you you know what you can find in those menus for the navigation you will not have uh, a full navigation screen here you will just have some uh, direction information uh, here and on the head-up display that you can see and of course in the main screen in the main screen this is an in inch a screen that we are going to uh, you know to go on you know, to go through some of the menus just to show you and I think for the last thing that needs to be, you know, shown to you guys is the head-up display that can be activated or deactivated. You can adjust it, you know, for the uh, height and everything. And for the content, just to show you what this car is capable of. Decent indication, incoming call, lane keeping system, navigation, speed assistance and speed sign recognition. So everything here is activated and you can find it right here in front of us. So we don't have uh, much information. I guess if I choose the content here, you can see how everything can be presented on the screen. Now, in terms of the eight inches multimedia screen. So first of all, the screen size is, I'm going to say, okay. I would have, it would have been better to have a 10 inch screen, but at least the, you know, the, the um, how it is adjusted is at the right height, so this is quite good. We have also the Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and we have also the, how do you call this, the wireless charging. And please, we also have the B&O sound system of 50, 575 watts with a subwoofer and nine loudspeakers. So it's 10 loudspeakers with the subwoofer. So we have a really, really good sound in this car. If you like, you know, the good sound, you really need to take this option or the trim that comes with it. And in terms of the menus, so I'm not going to go over all of them because it's a lot, but just to show you the driver assistance, what kind of things that you have in this car. So you, you do have a lot of electronics to uh, for you to have, you know, a better safety safety while driving and also in case of, you know, accident and just two or three menu just to show you what do you have, what you can control on the car so you have a lot of things. Um, in general, what do we have? I just forgot. Okay, just some general settings, nothing special. There will be 
one thing that I would like to show you because this is what will be shown while driving after is for the mobile application for the power flow uh, system so you can see how the car handles the engines and the battery and of course we have all here the shortcut for the home menu so we have you know this divided screen of course you can have this in a complete screen of course not only half and you have some shortcuts for the different systems like audio phone navigation mobile apps and uh, settings the screen is okay the um it's not that uh, you know dynamic when you change menus or switch stuff so this could have been improved but it does the job so well you know it's okay we also have here the rear camera and also the split view the the camera system is very nice we have uh, a good quality of uh, the camera and we have also the uh, 360 view with the uh, parking sensors uh, right here which you can have which is really great you have here the buttons to control everything that is linked to the radio system and you can also if you would like have a blank screen so maybe i need to take this off so this is what is considered i think a blank screen blank screen you just have the time and you can also uh, so you can put it off if you don't want it so this is very nice you have this black and this shiny plastic here that can be you know scratched easily but you don't have a lot of that a lot of them in the car so this is just great you have the usual things to control the you know the temperature in the car and we have the seat warmers and the also the warmer for the for the oh my god i will always forget this word oh sorry guys for the um steering wheel oh my god, i made it oh my god for the steering wheel and you have of course here the wireless charging usb c usb a 12 volts 12 volt socket the same materials here which is very nice we have this little rotary thing here to control the you know the parking rear neutral d and l to uh, how do you call this you know to have a better uh, regen braking when you take your foot off the accelerator pedal and we will test this after I, I really like it actually you know it's 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 very nice it does it feels good you know in the hand so this is a nice touch and we have here the cup holders which is also uh, which comes with a light but that we don't see it right now and here we have the electric parking brake and the auto hold feature there we have the uh, you know the automatic parking system we have the se parking sensors we have the ev modes we have the uh, ev mode auto mode mm, battery hold mode and battery charging mode which the last one of course should not be used because it's you know it will have a high fuel consumption in this case and here to change the different mode we have eco normal sport trail and low um, i don't remember how it's called it is just to show you we have the slippery mode yeah the slippery mode here so of course we'll be for our test in eco mode because this is what the car should be the most comfortable and we'll see also in sport mode what it does how the car reacts because don't forget this car has a cvt transmission so well you know we'll see how it handles we have some space here to put something here we can also on the armrest take it up and we have some sp little space here and of course you can also take it out to uh, have something here so it's quite deep and you also have uh, which is hidden on the left here we have also a, a 12 volt socket right here so i'm just thinking if i still have something to show you about the car before i make a little test drive to see how it handles itself um i think that's it um, oh yeah also an addition that I still would like to mention in this car is this part here which is you know also in this synthetic leather which is not too hard so it's comfortable to touch and also if you have you know your leg on it it's quite comfortable I do like the fact that they did not put a just a hard plastic just like that so this is a nice addition to the car so i think that's it this is also sorry guys i forget this is also quite nice it's um nicely uh, soft material here so this is a nice addition so that's it and see you later for the test drive 
Okay, everyone, so let's make a little test drive of the car. I just like to show you the different modes and how it works. And so, well, let's go. So we're going to start the car. So it's back in French, but anyway, it's not going to be a problem. So first, let's see. Let's put ourselves in the eco mode. The car starts in normal mode every time. I think and then we are going to drive to start with the 100% um, EV mode and here it's just quite interesting so here we have the um, what it says here is that we are now in the 100% electric vehicle mode and we would like and if we want we can just press on this OK button to activate the fuel engine if we need. For example, if we need a bigger acceleration because we are going to overtake a car, you just need to press this button to activate the fuel engine and you do not have to search for the, you know, for the button here. So let's see. Now we are ready. Let's put ourselves in drive. And here you will have the energy flow right here that I'm showing you so you can see how the car handles itself. And so let's go. So, 100% electric. Now, what is important is that this car will be able to, at least, you know, while driving in the city, to have this 100%, um, you know, acceleration, I mean, this, this acceleration uh, completely in electric mode if you have enough battery uh, in the, if you have enough battery. So, So as you can see, we have here the um, electricity consumption. So here I am consuming 12 kilowatt hour and if I take my food off, we are regenerating and we are, you know, reaching some e regenerating some energy here. And we see that the fuel engine is off and you can also see here with the um, animation right there. So the car is quite comfortable. The the isolation, the sound isolation from outside is quite good. There is nothing to say, um, nothing to add about that. It's a very nice, um, it's very nice. You also have this little artificial sound that you have when you uh, drive, you know, low speed. You have it in the front when you are engaged in the, you know, the, the normal drive mode. And if you put the rear, you will have the noise um, just in the back for the pedestrians. So now I'm going to activate, I just press the button because I would like to see how it works. So we have activated the, the, the fuel engine. And now let's, uh, so you, as you, it deactivate itself because I think that if you do not really need it, because you pressed by mistake or you are driving, you know, too, yeah, let's say eco-friendly. So it deactivates itself. So let's press OK. I would like to accept more. And as we can see, we, you saw here, you can see here right now that the um, fuel engine is on. And after a while, or depending on the driving, driving style, it will get, you know, deactivated again. So this is just to allow you to engage the fuel engine but you do not need to press you know to search for the button for that so this is how the electric uh, system works now let's see because we have the um, the how do you say to keep the battery and to put myself in the guide of the electric vehicle so as you can see in this mode i am supposed to keep the battery for future use when i need it but still depending on your driving style you can still you know how do you say you can um uh, i forgot the word you can just you know slowly drive without accelerating too much you will still you will uh, you will still be in electric but if you go too fast the car will in a, will anyway it will engage engage the uh, the fuel engine so now we're going to see because of course 
I'm going to drive a little bit stronger just to show you. Just waiting. So now you see we are in hybrid mode because I have accelerated too much. I'm consuming too much battery. So um, it will engage the fuel engine, you know, sooner. So now we have, you know, both engine depending on the situation or maybe only the fuel engine if you are going, you know, maybe on the highway. I'm not sure the electric engine will kick in in this case. But there we go. So you see it accelerates and it goes with the fuel engine. Now we also have the um, so we have also the charging mode but it's not available right now I do not know why exactly it was before but not now and now the car is going to to control itself you know to adjust itself automatically it will choose the electric engine the fuel engine both of them depending on your driving style and what you're asking uh, of the car in terms of power but as you can see already you can have you can accelerate stronger in the electric mode before the fuel engine kicks in. So in the big picture, picture that, that, that's how it works. And that is how the car is able to maximize the efficiency and lower the fuel consumption and the uh, CO2 emission. This is how it handles itself, which is, which is very good. I asked too much and it gives us both engine. Now we also have the L mode. So it almost allows us to have a uh, almost one pedal driving style. I'm just taking my foot off the pedal. I'm having a higher regen braking. I can almost, and I'm gonna have to, I have to accelerate now, but I can almost stop like that, almost, not completely. So you have a nice acceleration. For sure, the car has a nice acceleration. Acceleration. It's 225 horsepower, but the car is heavy. So this is a drawback of this car in terms of performance. It's going to be its weight, which is, you know, well, quite a lot. Now we give it a good acceleration, but we were in eco mode. So of course we have less, you know, a less good reaction time and like we have less power, but we are going to put ourselves in um so in the sport mode where is the sport mode it's right here so here we have the instrument cluster cluster that is going to change a little bit the car is almost almost in hybrid mode which means that every time you accelerate uh, the fuel engine is going to kick in because you need you need this power right now you need it you, you don't have the time to wait for the car to decide if it should engage the fuel engine mode no it's right away so here you have the full power of the car available right now with a better reaction time so this is this is nicely done so now let's wait because we have a speed radar here hello we do have a lot of them in this country my god so let's see so we have a higher reaction um, a lower sorry lower reaction time so this is nice we have this sound of you know like a scooter of course we have a CVT transmission so well you do have this noise but the engine noise itself is good you know it's not a bad noise so you will be able you know to um, you know to, to handle to bear the noise and you will not always accelerate like that you have a plug-in hybrid vehicle the objective is fuel efficiency so for the occasional you know sport mode that you need is it's okay as long as you drive if in a you know normal way or in an eco-friendly way you will probably not even bother with this noise you will not even you know 
not have it in mind so it's still well made that is for sure there have been some cars where the CVT transmission makes the engine well noisy and especially in the car and it's not you know nice to hear but in this case well it's not the case <laughs> so that's good it's it's really bearable I do not find any problem for the um, what, what did I forget so we have tested the different modes we have tested the sport mode and eco mode what are the difference well that's funny I'm just seeing I did not pay attention but <laughs> that, that, that's funny the, the car that is in front of us here well you know of course it's just an icon of a car but it's a Mustang hmm, that's funny I'd like to drive one one day but that's funny to have this icon usually you have a random car you know a generic car or you have your car but not another model model hey, that's funny so that's <laughs> that's a funny one okay so what else is I've talked about the modes the CVT transmission uh, for the uh, also the L mode we have also for the 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 braking system I do not find any problems you know because you first have the regenerative braking then you have the friction so you have the physical contact of the brakes but in this car I'm I'm not really feeling it you know this some say, they say that it's not comfortable you know you have to find the right dosage to brake but really I did not even I did not even notice it in this car in some of the cars you can feel it worse but that's not my case so anyway the car if, the car if is comfortable enough that's for sure the suspensions are comfortable but if you have some you know some bumps it can be a little more you know stiff the seats are comfortable you have plenty of space um, the, the seats are also a little bit hard but you know not too much but a little bit hard but you are not the only drawback of the seats for a ST trim ST line uh, trim is that you miss some you know uh, some how to say your your uh, your legs and your back they are not well uh, you know well blocked um, on the seats so that's the drawback of, of those in terms of movements like that in the car when you are going to take um, a roundabout or something this is well made you don't have you don't have this this movement to match they have been able to limit it which is great because the car is heavy but the car is comfortable in you know when you need to turn and you have some roundabouts this is well made nothing to say just the seats you have a good range with the car that's for sure and the last drawback I forgot is that for the charging time the cap the, uh, the power to charge it is limited to 3.7 kilowatt which is less than in some other you know cars so that's a, a drawback a drawback otherwise the car is really nice so I hope that for those who are maybe going to test it that you will enjoy it as much as I did and well see you next time for another video bye bye